Hello, everyone. Hope you guys are having a good evening or a good morning, wherever you are, whatever time you are watching this video. I don't know how long I have left here on YouTube. One day, I'm just going to become a full-time VKer, rumbler, bit shooter guy in front of a camera. But anyway, there was an interesting interview that was done by The Economist today of... Uh, a major Ukrainian general by the name of Valery Zaluzhny. And in this interview, Zaluzhny says that killing Russians has become a religion for him. Killing has become a religion, or like a religion. This is what he says, that killing Russians has become like a religion for him. And I'll read to you what he says, and I'm going to read to you uh, what he says before he says this, just to give you guys some context, but he says, for us, for the military, the war began in 2014, for me personally, in July of 2014, and this makes sense because this is when the war broke out in Donbass between the Ukrainian government and the pro-Russian fighters. And so he says, I had no idea what war really was in 2014. I had read a lot of books. I had graduated from all the academies with a gold medal. I understood everything theoretically, but I did not understand what war really meant. But in eight years of war, until 2022, both I and people like me understood it all perfectly well. All we did when the large-scale aggression started was to implement <clears throat> not only our knowledge, which we, really, which we already had in 2014, but also the skills and the experience we have gained since then. And the most important experience we had, and the one which we have practiced almost like a religion, is that Russians and any other enemies must be killed, just killed. And most importantly, we should not be afraid to do it. And this is what we are doing. So he says that killing Russians has become almost like a religion. Killing Russians is like doing a uh, religious practice. It's like fasting twice a week. It's like going to mass every Sunday. It's like going to your Wednesday night Bible study. It's like a religion. And this is pretty disturbing. Now, I know a lot of you guys are going to interpret this as, well, he's simply talking about the Russian invaders, but he doesn't say the invaders. He doesn't say, you know, we're fighting for the good of humanity and we're, we have to fight against the invaders, right, because they're against our sovereignty. This is not what he says. And if he did say this, I would not be doing a video about it. He says killing Russians. And this is why I suspect what he is talking about is just Russians in general. And I'm going to read to you guys something from the Wikipedia article. And this is a reason why I suspect that when he says that he wants to kill Russians, he's not just talking about Russian invaders. So it says here in the Wikipedia article on Mr. Valery Zaluzhny, on November 2nd, 2021, so quite recently, Zaluzhny appointed Dmitro Yarosh, former leader of Right Sector, as his advisor. Now, Dmitry Yarosh, or Dmitro Yarosh, is one of the OGs, if you will, of the Azov Battalion, if, or uh, of the Right Sector. If you go back to the history to the precursor of Right Sector and Azov, what you will find is that there was an organization in Ukraine back in the 90s called the SNPU, the Social National Party of Ukraine. And basically they were saying we're national socialists, but instead of saying national socialists, they said we're social national. So they just reversed the words, right? I'm not a national socialist, I'm a social nationalist so the social national party of ukraine and the snpu 
was not just, it wasn't just merely a political party. It was a paramilitary. It was a right-wing paramilitary organization in Ukraine, and they went all the way to to Russia in the 90s, and they and they fought against the Russians, helping in the jihad of the Chechens. The Chechens were fighting the Russians in the 1990s, and these Ukrainian Nazis went all the way to Chechnya to join the jihad against the Russians. And, and the Ukrainian fighters were known for their cruelty. They were known to pluck out eyeballs and do all sorts of horrific, sadistic things. And the Chechens really liked them because they were quite effective in the battlefield. There's something that I should add here in regards to Mr. Dmitro Yarosh, uh, and that is that this guy actually made an appeal to Al-Qaeda uh, <laughs> to get their support for the Ukrainian cause. And it says here uh, in his Wikipedia article, on March 1st, 2014, Right Sector's page on Russian online social networking service, V Contacte, showed an entry with Dmitry Yarosh's alleged appeal to Doku Umarov, a Chechen militant guerrilla leader associated with Al-Qaeda for support of Ukraine. On March 2nd, 2014, Right Sector's spokesman Art Skoropatsky denied the message was posted and approved by Yarosh. According to the spokesman, this alleged appeal to Umarov appeared on Right Sector's Vicontacte webpage after one of its administrators' accounts was hacked. Vicontacte blocks the page at a request of an attorney general of Russia. On March 11th, 2014, Russian State Duma Deputy Valery Rashkin urged Russian special services to follow Mossad examples and assassinate leaders of right sector Dmitry Yarosh and Oleksandr Mushichko, Muzichko. So there you go. There's this guy. So this guy, this general, Mr. Valery uh, Zaluzhny, he appoints this bloodthirsty Nazi, Mr. Dmitry Yarosh, to be his advisor. And this tells me everything about Mr. Zaluzhny, that he's a Nazi. I mean, there are a lot of you guys who would disagree with me, some of you guys maybe. But here's the thing. They are neoliberals out there who probably wouldn't make a big deal about this, right? Liberals who are pro-Ukraine who wouldn't make a big deal about this. But let's... Bring this to an American environment. What if, let's say, Donald Trump appointed a Nazi to be his advisor? You don't think you guys would be upset by that? You would be, and rightfully so. Let's say uh, Joe Biden hires some communist to be his advisor and... Dennis Prager comes, or, you know, name your favorite right-wing pundit. Your favorite right-wing pundit comes out and says, look, Biden actually appoints a communist to be his advisor. You wouldn't sit there and say, come on, that's that's not a big deal. Of course you would, right? So the same applies to this. The same logic applies to this. Mr. Zaluzhny appoints a Nazi to be his advisor. Tells me a lot about Mr. Zaluzhny. He likes right sector. He likes Azov. He likes these guys. And the Azov battalion likes killing Russians. I mean, they like it. It's like a sport to them. It's not just a, a war thing, right? It's not just a battlefield thing. It's like they enjoy this stuff. They get pleasure in it. And I, I want to read to you guys some articles that I posted up when the war began back in April when the war was still very fresh in the headlines and people were still inhaling the steam from the hot, fresh ink. Now they're not. Now we're talking about Kim Kardashian's ass and we're talking about some football coach who died. So <laughs> I crack myself up sometimes. So Here's 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 uh, some uh, some articles that I posted. This is what, an article that I posted back in April. 
Ukrainian nationalists declare this message. All Russian children in Donbass should have their heads cut off. A Ukrainian, na- and this is real, by the way. This is not just something that I pulled out. Like, there's actually a video of this guy talking this way. A Ukrainian nationalist who who uh, goes by the, by, I had a type, I, who guys by the nickname. Okay, I, I must have been just under the influence of... Uh, some Russian music or something. A Ukrainian nationalist who goes by the nickname Medic said recently that all Russian children in Donbass, along with their parents, should have their heads cut off. A Ukrainian nationalist from Azov Battalion, recognized as an extremist organization, with the call sign Medic, called for the killing of children living in the Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics, as well as the cleansing of the entire population of Donbass. He stated this during a live broadcast on social networks. They and their children should have their heads cut off and the entire Donbass cleaned up. This is reportedly by the publication Ridovka. So this is how a lot of these Ukrainian fanatics think. They're they're like the Nazis in the film Come and See. If you haven't seen that movie, you should go see Come and See. That's what we're dealing with here. We're dealing with people who don't mind... I don't know, lynching some Russian people and then posing for pictures in front of the dead bodies. Just like the Nazis did back in the day. They did sick stuff like this. So here's another one. Ukrainian Nazis enter people's homes, murder the men, the women and children, and even rape the women. And there's a video you can see here. This is of of a civilian giving his testimony. And let's just play it here. Why not? Why don't we just play it here? All right, let's play the clip. Нас он назов, блядь, заходит в подвалы. Заходит в подвалы и расстреливает людей. Детей, мужчин, женщин. А как они девок насиловали? Насилуют, выкидывают и убивают. Украинцы, да? Назов. Есть зеленый коридор. Люди выезжают, наши их останавливают, ну, украинцы. Говорят, или едьте домой, или мы вас расстреляем. Некоторых вообще без слов, вот так вот, колонны проехали, они ее с миномета обфигачили. Мы у своих же в плену сидели. Как нам потом людям, людям кому-то объяснить, что, что мы видели, как нас, как нас сами же украинцы стреляют. Человек вышел на балкон покурить, а он стоит ему на танке вдвоем, говорит, попадешь в него. Замерзший бычок выкинул и побежал пешком туда. Ну, представь, дети все, они заезжают во двор с двумя автоматами, какой-то недоразвитый, не знаю, что там он употреблял, так две очереди стреляют в калаши. Говорит, что вы стоите, остановитесь раком. Я Говорит. только их логику не пойму. Они, что, за кого не воюют, если их даже государство бросило. Они по всем квартирам как ходили бомжи. на веревках, еду, у кого что поставалось, квартиры побросали, на веревках. Прибор какой-то вот у них, что, что двери открывают, Это какой-то пшик-пшик. Все двери пооткрывали, короче, все, всю еду позабирали в полотенце, в эти самые, в простыня. Люди говорят, мы собирали эту там консерву, тушенку себе там с получкой отказывали на всякий случай, чтобы было. Позабирали там позор такой там. And here's another one. Ukrainian nationalists tell Russians in Donbass, you will die here. They murder civilians, even children. And here's from a news article from News N. NN, and it says here on the ma- on the train from the Donbass, which arrives in the morning of April second in Nizhny Novgorod, Novgorod residents of Mariupol arrived. They told the news as NN why they left their hometown and also shared their impressions of the trip. Our house was burned to the ground. They sat in the basement for a long time. Azov fired at us, and they said that we would die there. Together with these people, they spared no children, no one, all because we were waving Russian flags. We barely escaped, refugee Nina told News NN. She arrived in Nizhny Novgorod with her daughter, granddaughter, and a parrot. According to Nina, the train staff treated them well, etc., etc. Another refugee, Valentina, also admits that she left the city due to severe destruction. Mariupol has been wiped off the face of the earth. There is nothing left, she said. Valentina and her friend Svetlana ate and slept well, etc. Et and there's a, a video you can watch. I remember, and I remember posting this video when the war began. You can there's a video you can see, and the camera is positioned on a, a car's dash.
and the car is driving. And this was in Mariupol. The driver is trying to get out of Mariupol. And the Azov guys stop a car in front of the vehicle. And they force the people out of the car. They hit them. They tie their, their hands behind their backs. They arrest them. Then they, the guy said, the guy, the driver, whose camera is on, on the dash, he says, to help with this. He begins to drive back. And the Azov guys open fire on him. They were blocking people from leaving Mariupol. This was in the beginning of the war. And I remember there was a Greek man living in Ukraine who said that he could not leave Mariupol. I'm pretty certain it was Mariupol. He could not leave Mariupol because the Nazis were blocking the exits. They don't mind killing people. And this general says killing Russians is like a religion. He loves Azov. When he says, when he says that he wants to kill Russians and killing Russians is like a religion. And, he, and then I find out that he loves Azov. He's with Azov. And then you read stories about Azov killing civilians. He doesn't just mean the soldiers, everybody. This is come and see. Here's another story here. Nazis in Ukraine kidnap young girl and a man. They execute the man by shooting him to death, bury the girl alive. This is from SM News. It says, a resident of the village of Rey Gorodok, Novaya Darsky district, spoke about the crimes of the Idar Battalion. According to him, one night the Nazis came to his house, put a bag over his head, and took him away for interrogation. A bag over his head, and they took him away for interrogation. One girl was buried alive. A man of military correspondence of the Ruskaya Vesna publication who work in the NWO zone in Donbass, said shocked. He added the details that he was beaten, but they did not achieve anything. Then they wanted to execute him, threw him into a car, and started shooting. As it turned out, there were two of them in this car. The second person died from his back wounds, and he had a bullet struck, stuck in the rib, so he remained alive. And there's a bunch of stories like this online. And then you see the video of the Azov guys shooting Russian POWs, murdering them doing mass executions, crucifixion, burying a man alive. And you can read this story. This story says that they buried a girl alive. You can, oh, that's Russian propaganda. That's bullshit. There is an actual video where you can see these Nazis putting a man in a ditch and burying him alive. They hit him, they hit him over the head with a shovel, they, and, and they bury him alive. This isn't bullshit. This isn't bullshit. And, and there's just so much, you know, there's so much wackiness out there. Like, I, I read a, a story that back in June, and, and this was not reported in the mainstream media, but this comes from the Russian media, but according to Russian media outlets, back in June, a number of American volunteers who went to Ukraine to fight for the, you know, to fight for the Ukrainians against, you know, evil Putler... A number of American volunteers were murdered by Azov, and the Azov guys burned their bodies to hide the evidence. And there's a video you can see, and they show a burnt-up American ID. And you know what? If you make an alliance with a snake and the snake bites you, you shouldn't be surprised. These are Nazis. These aren't good people. These aren't righteous people. These are evil people. People who would not mind turning on their own people. People who would not mind killing their own. People who don't mind creating propaganda by actually murdering people and then saying, oh, look, 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 look how evil Russia is. We saw this with the, the missile that hit Poland. A missile hits Poland. Two Polish civilians die. And, and I feel sorry for those guys. They were, they, were, they were just regular grain farmers. They were minding their own business, doing their job, and they're dead. And then all of a sudden, their deaths become propaganda uh, material for the Polish and the Ukrainian governments to, to, start a, to, to, to further escalate the war, to get NATO in the conflict. It's insane. It's truly insane. And this is something that I forgot to add in my video, uh, my video that was titled Ukraine is Evil. I should have said this. Ukraine doesn't mind uh, using the, the deaths of, of... Ukraine doesn't mind firing a missile into Poland, 
killing people and then saying, look, Russia did it. That's evil. It's pure evil. It's pure evil. Anyway, you guys just heard some Theo Logi. God bless.